So let's come back here. Strings know how to strip leading and trailing spaces off. Let's see what else they know how to do. Let me fire up IPython. And my string is going to be um, helium is helium with a couple of spaces before and after. So let's print helium. Okay, let's print helium. Please strip off leading and trailing white space. Now, here there were spaces after the word helium. Here there are not because strip got rid of the leading and trailing white space. What about print helium dot uppercase? Nope, there's nothing called uppercase. What about just upper? Oh, there's something that will take a string and convert it all to uppercase. I wonder about lower. Print helium dot lower. I can convert a string from uppercase to lowercase. What about Hmm. Actually, I don't know what the other things are I can do with strings. How would I find out? Help helium. Whoops, that didn't work. How about help string? Aha! Helium's a variable. It's pointing at a string. When I ask for help on string, it gives me all of the things that strings know how to do. I can count the number of non-overlapping occurrences of a substring in a string. I can check whether it ends with something. I can find things. Let's try find. Let's try helium. Let's find E. It says that E occurs at location 3. Well, what is helium at location 3? It's an E. Okay, let's try helium.findz. Z, for those of you who live south of the border, minus 1. It doesn't give me an error. It says minus 1. I couldn't find this for you. Okay, let's go back and see what other things strings know how to do. Center it. Find. Are all the characters alphabetic? Are all the characters digits? Oh, that one's useful. Helium is digit. False. What about 1, 2, 3, 4 is digit? True. Aha! I've got a way to see whether I might be able to convert a string to a number safely before I try to do it. All right. What about... What about saying atoms is hydrogen, helium, lithium. Atoms is now those three words separated by commas. Atoms, split yourself on commas. Split gives me back a list of new strings. What it's done is explode the original based on whatever character I gave it. I asked it to explode on the comma, to split on the comma. So what I get back is hydrogen, then helium, then lithium, because those are the places where there were commas in the original string. What happens if I go A, comma, B, comma, C, comma, comma, D, split on commas? Well, I get the A, the B, the C, and then I get an empty string because there's nothing between those two commas. Each one of those commas got me a split. There was nothing there, so I get empty string, which is the string equivalent of zero. And then I get the D. All right, let me have a look at my data again. My data is separated by commas. So let's go back to my program and say fields is line, well, let's say temp is line.strip, and then the fields in that line are temp, please split yourself on commas, and then we'll print the fields. So what I'm going to do is read each line, strip off any leading or trailing white space, just in case it's indented, get rid of that new line. Then I'm going to split that line into pieces based on commas, and then I'm going to print out what I get. Okay, 
each time through I'm getting a list. The date as a string, the species as a string, and then a, a number as a string. Okay, we're getting closer to doing what we wanted. Let's come back. Field zero is the date, fields one is the species, and fields two is the count. So, count is int of fields two. Date, species, count. So this is the one I want, but we count from zero, so zero, one, two. Fields two is going to be the count as a string. So I have to convert it to integers. And then I say total is total plus count. But I better make sure there is a variable called total before I start. Why? Well, if I say x is 1 and y is 2, x plus y is 3. What if I do x plus z? There is no such variable. Again, Python differs from some other languages. In some languages, if I try to read from a variable that doesn't yet exist, the language will say, well, you obviously wanted there to be a variable called z, so I will create it for you and I will give it a default value, like zero or the empty string or something like that. The problem with that is it's all too easy to make typing mistakes. If I say total is total plus cont instead of count, in some languages this would be fine. It would say total, sure, it doesn't exist yet, let's give it the value zero. Cont doesn't exist yet, let's give it the value zero, so it assigns zero back to total because of a typing mistake. I don't want that to happen. So I have, to I have to give all of my variables values before I can use them. So here at the top, I explicitly say total so far is zero. And then for each line, strip off leading and trailing white space, split on commas, convert field two, zero, one, two, to integer, add it to total, and then say, total number of creatures seen and total. I can print any number of values at once just by separating things with commas. Okay, let's try counting fish. Total number of creatures seen is 30. I don't know if that's the right answer. 3 plus 1 plus 15 plus 2 plus 1 plus 4 plus 1 plus 2 plus 1. My dad could do that in his head. I can't. Let's try this. Uh, Test.text. I'm just going to add three marlins and one shark. I've created a simpler test case that I can do in my head. Three plus one is four. Now I have to come back and change the file that I'm opening. Because if I didn't change the file, I would be trying to read from temp.txt, which still has all of the creatures, and I wouldn't actually be running my test. So, let's see what happens when I run on that file. The answer is four. Three creatures plus one creature should be four. Excellent, I get four. This gives me some confidence that my program might be doing the right thing. Let's go into test.txt. Go back to temp. Let's grab the tuna line because that's the one that's got the most creatures. 3 plus 1 plus 15 is 19. Okay. Good. I got the right answer in a couple of cases. I've got some confidence that this program's working correctly. Now, it's annoying that I have to go back in here and edit the program in order to run it on a different data file. That's going to be very error prone. If I have to go into my script and edit it to change the name of the file that it's processing every single time I want to process a different file, then sooner or later I'll forget to do that and I'll process the wrong file, but think I processed the right one. It makes it impossible to automate things. I can't go off and process a thousand files one after another. We need a way to get file names into our program, but we're not going to do that just yet. Let's finish solving this problem. Okay. Now we're going to see what happens if we run our program on our actual data. Good, 30 creatures. I now believe this answer because 
I've traced through the execution in a simple case. The simple cases work. This is just a bigger version of the cases I used in my test. I'm willing to move on to my next problem.